I'm Fred McNeil, and you're watching QAC TV 7. The name of the show is Papa's World. Every week for the last couple months, we've been bringing in different authors to talk about their books or their experiences here in Queen Anne's County. Now we've got an old friend of mine, Nick Hoxter, who not only has more stories about Queen Anne's County than any man or woman I know, but he has a new book out. Nick, thanks for joining us oh, again. Oh, my all pleasure. Right. Now, tell us all about this great new book you got. Well, the new book is growing up on, uh, excuse me, is... Uh, You've written so many, but okay. Oh, yeah. This one is this Changing Island. It's Kent Island. And this is brand new. It's brand new. Okay. It, it came out the Kent Island Day. That's Saturday. Um, and the reason I did this book, really, was people have would come to me in church and, and said how much they enjoyed this show. And they, they asked me questions, and, I, and sometimes I would have to go back and talk to my friend Bill Lenny and say, I remember... Help, clear, help, yeah. Clarify it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, people would say, uh, for example, you had uh, somebody told... Oh, I was in a cemetery. And a young man come up and he said, Mr. Nick, he said, I used to work for you. And after a while I said, oh, Lord, I do remember you. That was 30 years ago. And he said, uh, a man told me that you had um, a prison camp here. I said, yeah, during World War II. Okay. And he said... These were German and Italian prisoners? Well, yeah, were German. Now, okay. they were German prisoners. Okay. After after the war, it went and the, the state took it over. Okay. And, and it was a prison camp for, for the state. State, you know, for, state yeah. prison. Okay. But uh, during World War II, um, the the Germans, and they were, these were trustworthy Germans, right, right. if there's such a thing. But anyway, they were. They were. And... Uh, the farmers would get them to come down and spend, they'd work, they work 12 the hours a day. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. And I've even seen them um, sometimes, very rarely. Uh, they, also, the Mennonites did it because okay. they were they were conscientious, conscientious objectors. objectors right. They wouldn't do it. Alternative and, service. Oh, right? yeah. Rather than go in the military, that's, they would that's do That's absolutely else. right. Fine people. Okay. Fine people. Yeah. Just to their belief. That they was didn't their believe in war. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And um, I, I guess... I, this is not a lie. It, it's hard to believe, but sometimes we'd see a guard come in, and he'd have a, a couple German prisoners, and he'd have a couple of Mennonites, and they want to go to service, the church oh, service. The church, and okay. Yeah. Right. And I thought, and the, and and the people welcomed them. This is know. right on Canada. Oh yeah, right the Mennonites in Stevensville. had a church. Or? Pardon? The, the Mennonites had a church in the city. No, no, they okay. came. They they wanted to be with the Lord. They came oh, okay. to the Methodist Church okay. and, and just uh, right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so tell me about the book, the cover now. Start with the, the cover. cover. The cover is a painting um, which I had done of my great-grandfather's blacksmith shop. And this was right down on the main street? In right the, on okay. the main street in Stevensville. Uh, it was, he, he purchased that around, he built that around 1920. And uh, he did very good. He was very prosperous. And uh, in the early 30s, he came down with consumption which is today TB sure. and he just wasn't able to do the hard do, yeah. Work, yeah and remember this was during the Great Depression so things were and tough. My great, yeah were tough. and my great-grandmother said he had a lot of uh, unsecured loans out okay and he the, people couldn't had no money they yeah. couldn't do yeah. it so he lost the blacksmith shop and uh, he lost another business he had there he had a bus store I'll tell you that little story. Nick, let me just remember, for the people living down there now are familiar, what's what's in the place, what, what's on the property now? Uh, they tore everything down, okay. and Mike Foster's uh, law office is okay. there. So it's where the Foster oh, laws. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, right next to it was my great-grandfather's uncle, a uh, brother, Uncle Joe Hoxter. And next to him was the first and only, that, uh, in my time, Mrs. There was a deputy sheriff here by the name of Bright. Ben Bright, I believe it was. He lived down in Alma. He was a deputy sheriff. Mm -hmm. And his wife was a fine lady, and she opened up the very first uh, kindergarten. Well, like a private kindergarten. Yeah. Like the public schools yeah. didn't have kindergarten. No, 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 so no. you oh, drop no. your kid off. Yeah. At, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, it, it was just... Uh, it's like a daycare center. Yeah, that's, that's really what it was, yeah. Okay. It only lasted about a year or so. All right. And uh, But I went, my brother went. Uh, Billy Dan said, I can't remember when I saw your memory's not as good as mine anyway. <laughs> but uh, so many of those things down there are gone, but still uh, across from, from my great-grandfather's uh, blacksmith, blacksmith shop was the local funeral director, uh, Mr. Thomas. Oh, and Frank Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. Was he the only one at that time? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And... Uh, and then next to him was, was Frank, uh, excuse me, was Henry Gorman's store. And as we come back, and I never knew this, Melvin Clark told me, um, right next to my great-grandfather's blacksmith shop, Mr. Bill Denny, the uh, 
older Mr. Vildini, he uh, had a um, a shop where they he sold Chevrolets, and he also had. This is in the 1920s. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And and the 30s, the 30s and the 30s, and 30s, okay. 30s, and and he also um, did car repair. And one day, Billy and I were out with Melvin. Melvin, he's, he's gone now, but he had so much information, and he said. Did you guys know that over top of there was the town office? The town of Stevensville had a town office. I said I never knew <laughs> Stevensville had a town. Well, he was ten years young, uh, older, older than, than we you. were. Yeah, okay. uh, and and uh, we always took him places with us because he knew so much more. He knew the history. Yeah, yeah. Walking yeah. In. Nick. Before I, we go back to the book, how long have the Hoxters been on? Canada? We came here in uh, wait a minute now, 1742. Oh, 1742. We came from the city and the county of Hoxter, Germany. Okay, so which you're is from German origin. Oh okay. yeah. Uh, uh, it, Hoxter is um, on the uh, Weser River. Okay. And it's about uh, 60 miles probably from Hanover. It's probably about 30 miles or 40 miles from Castle. Okay, so a beautiful part of Germany. Oh yeah, yeah. I've never got back there. One of my cousins was there during World War II with Patton. Okay. And uh, he said one night they were... They were <laughs> Bombing. <laughs> well, Bombing. No, when Patton was... He said... Patton was just... He was a character. He was a character. On was getting a character. to Berlin. Yes. He wanted and to he beat said, the Russians. Right? Yeah, yes. yeah. He called him my man. <laughs> okay. He was tough. He was a hard man. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was a hard man. And, and Billy loved him. And he said... But he loved Eisenhower a lot more. But he said um, they, they were coming across this bridge. And he said all of a sudden this... Uh, Soldier came running home. back, and he said, "Hoxter, come up! You got to see this." And he said he went up there, and the sign said, "Hoxter." Really? And that and was he and said, that's, it's the family where they're from. Yeah, that's old Hoxter. I didn't know they were killing my they, own people. What were they doing here in the 1700s? Any idea? Yeah, they were farmers, okay. blacksmiths. Okay. Uh, in fact, I, in in my second book or the third book, I've got all those people that were here. You've traced your whole yeah, family back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, let's go, Nick, let's go back to this book. All right, so what are okay. we, the new one, what are we talking about? Well, the new book, it's a lot of stories that, um, as I said, once we got on TV, people were coming to me saying, uh, hey, what about this and what about that? The right. prison camp. That's good. Uh, yeah. The school. I did, where exactly, let's, let's stay with it. Where exactly was the prison camp? Cox's Neck. Cox Neck Road. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. all the way yeah. down. All the way down. All the way yeah. down. And also down there, a lot of people, there was a tomato plant for years. Really? Yeah. Okay. That, there's so many things that people don't really realize. That's why you're good. You're, you're well, reminding us this stuff. God has given me a, an exceptional memory. Yeah, and I want to, someday all of this will be gone. Yes, it will. And the only thing we're going to have is this. And that's why I, it would be so nice if you'd come down and let me we show will. you what is I'm there. Gonna, I'm going to make a deal with the camera. I'm going to buy him lunch. <laughs> Nick, all right? We'll buy him this, whatever he needs. This here, I'm, I'm, I am proud of it. My... Well, tell us, yeah, keep going. When my that. wife died, mm -hmm. uh, I was lost. I had her. She was my soulmate for 42 sure. years, known her for 44 years. And the kid said, you've been working on a book with Mom. Go ahead and finish it. I said, I have no desire in this world to finish that book. You just because your wife and you yeah, were doing it. Your yeah. project, yeah. Well, they kept after me. Good. And one day I got things out, and I said, maybe maybe I should go ahead with it. So my very good friend Kay said, Kay Ewan, she said, uh, Go ahead and do the book. I went to my friend Billy Denny. He said, I want you to do it. There's so much history. I, I, sure. I've read what you've been doing so far, and I really like it. If you so, don't do it, nobody else has the well, information, that's, that, right? that's it. Yeah. And so many, there's very few of the old islanders left. Sure. God has called them all home. And as I like to say, they're in Ken Island Heaven. Oh, they're, they're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. And I bet yeah. there's no Bay Bridge, and I bet there's rock oh, no. are running there's no traffic north. No, 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 no. So uh, tell me what you got in there. Well, right? I, for example, a lot of people don't know it. We the first bridge that I ever remember was uh, um, the Kenton Harris Bridge, and some years, several years ago, they had a dedication, a rededication right. of it, and uh, they asked me if, if I would come and uh, speak. It was the hottest day I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay. And um, and when we, what year was this? I, the last I, last five six years. 2011. Okay. So my wife and I went as our guests. And I said, I remember the bridge was wood and they put tar and chip over it. And this is where the current bridge is no, on? No, 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 no. no. Different spot. Yeah. If you, as you go down to the Yacht Club, Canal Yacht mm -hmm. Club, mm -hmm. if you kept on, that's where the bridge was. Okay. That's where oh, it went a whole different spot. Okay. Yeah. And I have a good picture of it. And, and that was an old wooden bridge. It was, it was a steel bridge, okay. but it had wooden planks. Okay, so and actually, the, yeah. drove the vehicles or the whatever on the oh, yeah. Okay. And see, the bridge went up. It didn't. It's not open to anything. Okay. The railroad bridge opened. It went okay. around. It went around. Okay. But, but this one here, it went up. Okay. And uh, 
So when we, when we spoke, they, what they're trying to do, they're trying to bring back a lot of things that make the Narrows, the, the, the east side is already developed. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the west. So they had asked me there about what did you think about putting up the, uh, the Love Point Lake? And uh, I said, a, a replica? And I said, my gosh, I think it would be a sure. wonderful thing. And there was an old lighthouse there? No, no, what never was. was. But yeah. they, they asked me, what's your thoughts about where it should be? And I said, well, out on the point. But remember this, uh, to do that, you'd have to build a road because people like me would have trouble walking out there. Little sure. children can't go out yeah. there. Handicapped people can't. So the ideal place is to put it where the skipjack is. Okay. So last I heard, it, they were working and on it. It would be just a light, a beacon, a safety no, light. It, it would be the whole lighthouse. Oh, the whole lighthouse. Yeah, it, would, it would be this right here. Okay, terrific. Okay. And they asked me, where can we get the... They said, where can we get information on it? I said, did you ever read my book? I just happened to have there. a book. I yeah, it's in my book. And I, they, of course, they were a little embarrassed. They said, it is an asset. Oh, yeah. When, now, help me out. The uh, original Kent Narrows Bridge from, what, 20s, 30s? Uh, I say... I'd say around 1930. 1930s. Um, yeah, and it stayed until 52 when they... Then they built the current... Yeah, what, what, no, what no, is no. now the second bridge? Yeah, yeah the second, second bridge. bridge yeah. well, actually, this this was not the first bridge. The first bridge was Ken Oliver's. Even further back. Love them. Oh, they, They're busy people. They filled it in. They filled them. They filled it in. You and the, and the, the government come down and says, you, you can't, can't do, do this. They just filled so, in from one shore to yeah, another. Yeah, so you could drive across <laughs> it. So, so... um. That's an honorary group down there. Oh, I'm going to tell you right I'm now. I'm telling you something. I love them all. But My God, I'm glad to be one of them. Though. Thank <laughs> God I was born and bred Ken Oliver. It's just, it's just a wonderful place. It's changing so much. That's, that's why the book's so changing. So it has a nice story on the, the real yeah. story on the bridges on Ken Oliver. Yeah. Uh, so, it, you know, I don't have the new one. I don't think I have the new one in there. Uh, okay. But uh, I have to say that... Uh, when Governor Schaefer built that new bridge, it was a godsend because we were trapped. We, could, oh, we couldn't terrible. get out on weekends. One lane in, oh, one lane out. I can you remember couldn't get out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, this is the Waterman's Association uh, Memorial Bridge, and they're, they're working on trying to get this, uh, get it done, and get businesses on the other side. Sure. And I think it's wonderful. Oh, you know, you, yeah. you're going to do it. Good the, tourist spot. Right? Oh, it's wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So I, I, I did that. There's uh, a little bit of history about bridges. Yeah, it, it's that. Oh, here it is, 1930 to 1952. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and then uh, another one. Uh, I I had to I had a blessing. My wife was at the doctor's office in uh, Easton, and this lady is sitting there, and we got talking. And uh, I, I I just you know, fine lady. That was the end of it. Yeah. So one day I was invited to speak to a senior gathering in Easton. And when I walked in, the lady said, uh, uh, that lady there, her father was a captain. I said, no, he wasn't. Captain of a ferryboat. Yeah, okay. he was a captain. Because you knew him and you worked oh, yeah. on him, yes. And so this, this, is, how, this is how things work together. Sure. Sure. And she said, they took me over and introduced me, and I said, what is your name? And she said, Margaret Sherman. Uh, and her, then she gave me her last name. And I said, uh, your father wasn't a captain. He was the chairman of the ferry. Oh, he was the boss. One of the boats, boats were named after him. One of our ships, yeah. the B. Frank Sherman. And she didn't know that? Yes, yeah, she knew oh, it. She but knew she it. said, she, so she started taking out pictures and showing the group. And she said, unfortunately, my father did not put any names on here. And when she passed them to me, I said, You knew all these Wait people. a minute. Yeah. We, we went, we went, we, she said, I don't even know these captains. And look, these pictures are just remarkable what she gave me. And, they, they, and she had these pictures of the, the boats and the old captains. And, and the, the captains. Crews. And, and uh, the, here's the launching of the nice in 1938. Mm. Uh, here's here's the, um, the nice going through the uh, canal and being she towed. she had all these pictures. Had, and, and, and there was nothing. So she said to me, do, do you... She said, do you know these men? I said, my lord, yes. I said, that is Tommy Workerker. He, he, he was a captain, but he'd retired. So he came there and worked on the ferries as a first officer. Okay. That was Captain Marshall. I said, you know him, Pinky Cooper? The she, Coopers of Easton? I said, yes, it's his brother. Later, he worked on the ferries. So he later so became a trooper. she had no idea. You gave her back a little bit of family she history. She said, you've got to come to my house. Well, she lived in Londonderry. Okay. So my wife and I went down there, and we spent... She had boxes Three. full of pictures? Or oh! She, and she said, who are this? Who, who's that? Who's this? And, 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 and then she said, you know, 
we can't get all of this done today. Well, my wife, my wife is fighting cancer. And she was sitting on the sofa and I said, Margaret, look, and my wife had fell asleep. And she said, you let that woman sleep. We'll sit here and talk some more. Yeah, okay. Well, I had to go pick my great granddaughter up from school. So I, I knew I had to, like, but we did go back. I've met her three times. And you just kept looking at all these pictures and all the stuff she had, the shared oh, it, history. It, it was just remarkable. And I couldn't, I'd had, I'd had to write, written a book. 10 books probably. Oh, at least, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, and, and she said, uh, I really like you, and uh, I'm going to let you borrow these pictures. So I said, she had shoe boxes full. Mm -hmm. And these are all from her dad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was a chairman there, and it was a fine man. My mother had arthritis, crippling arthritis, and he would, uh, he, li he liked my dad a lot, so he would stop in from time to time and just say, Lance, on, yeah. how are you doing? <laughs> now, here he is, a chairman of the firm. Oh, he's the got on him. But, Everybody loved him. All the ferries he come aboard, they couldn't wait to see him. Now, know. was that state run or was that private? That was state. Well, it was private. Then the state took it took over in 19. Over. Okay. I guess 41 or 42. I can't. Okay. During the war, during they the took war. it over. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, see, they were supposed to build a bridge, and during the war, McKellen's, I mean, uh, they needed to steal from battleships. Yeah, and he, camps, no, you're yeah. not doing anything. So yeah. that's why the ferries stayed, stayed on okay. that long. But, uh, it was so the book is full with the interesting history of the fairies. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It, it was a it was a um, it, it was a, a time. Remember this: so many of our boys were just coming home from the service; they had no jobs. Right. The fairy heart, hundreds of them, just to keep toll them collectors, job. engineers, okay. that uh, deck hands, uh, and these were all veterans. That were all veterans. Hired. Oh yeah. yeah, and I learned so. We we had a they we, had stories oh, to tell. Man, they, had they, stories. they had so many stories. I got to tell you this one. One day I was on duty, and the purser, old World War II, a young World War II vet, had, Nick, get the flag, get the flags up, get the flags up. Well, we never put the flag up the governor or the president came on. Okay. So I ran to the bow and put the Maryland flag up, and when I got back, he had to, somebody had put the American, American flag up. So when we pulled out, I went to the purser and I said, Ed, tell me something. Who's on board? Who's on board? Yeah. Who's on board? You didn't see him? He's a congressman. Do you know who he is? I said, no. Major Devereaux, the oh. hero of Wake Island. Okay, and he was just touring or? No, he was, he'd been on the shore. He was okay. a congressman. Oh, he's coming back. And he's he was coming back. back. Okay. Well, when I looked, everybody was up there talking to him. He was a hero. Sure, sure. Wake Island. He's a rock star, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. my Lord. So I stood there and I'm in awe. And one of the last questions he asked, he's, they said, uh, Major, during World War, too, when things were really bad, they said that you sent a message to Pearl Harbor. And they said, what do you need? And you said, send us more Japs. <laughs> he said, let me tell you something. If there's one thing we didn't want was more Japs. Okay. We didn't want no Japs. So this guy was a big World War II oh, hero. Oh, yeah. Just... The hero of Wake All. In my, yeah. I mean, that was our... That was our that was our solitude. That, that That's what we had. And we started when everything. Hopping, right? Yeah, when everything... Yeah. When the Japs took Pearl, the next step was Wake Island. Right. And and we fought oh Tooth and Nail. Tooth and Nail. Foot by foot. And he was he was a hero. But it, it, you know, you met so many interesting people on there. Well, the veterans and the guys and gals came back, right? It was like Oh amazing. yeah. I mean this is these are the people you've been reading about in the papers. And oh, you've yeah. got one on your ferry boat yeah. here on Ken Island. Right? Yep. Which is good. Yep. So what else you got in it? Oh all right, let me say here, uh we had Nancy Nancy Pelosi and the uh, Excuse me, Nancy Cesari and uh, Steve, Steve, uh, oh Lord, he, he resigned. He was the chairman of the, uh, I mean, he was a superintendent of the parks. Not a big, okay. And, uh, For the county, you mean? Yeah. For the county. And, and I, one day, I had written this, this the second book, and uh, I went down there before I wrote it, and the county had let the, or the state had let the clubhouse, Mattapee Clubhouse, Fall right to just run down. Yeah. They had taken it over and used it as a barracks and headquarters for training cadets to become uh, police, police officers. Yes. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. So I went down there. The door was open. Um, I looked inside, and vines uh, looked like mm. Tarzan was there. Had pull, were pulling the sides of the building in. Mm. I had Billy Denny with me, and he said, "Hoxie, I can't believe it." They let, they this, let happen. this happen. Yeah. They had drilled holes in the white cedar siding, put in punching bags. Now, this was the office for the. This was Mattapique Clubhouse. Oh, this was a clubhouse. It was a private clubhouse yeah. for recreational purposes. So, 
after I wrote the book, I received a call from DNR. And they said, uh, this was the man was the architect. And he said, Mr. Hoxter said, I'm, I, I don't have his name here. He said, uh, I just got through reading your story on Mattapink. And he said, uh, you were pretty hard on us. I said, you deserved every word to put yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. Anybody to destroy this a building was, like that. Historic. It's a part of our history. Sure, sure. He said, um, we talked about 15 minutes. Why don't you come down? I'd like to talk to you. So I went down there. And he said, uh, show me around. You know where it is. So I took him up and showed, showed him where the toll houses were, where the road was he came. He gave him a guided tour. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he said, this is amazing. I, I didn't realize. Now, it had, was a recreation. Was it a public park or a private well, club? Well, when it was built, it was a restaurant. Okay. And Privately it, owned restaurant. Yeah. Uh, in fact, a guy from Graysonville owned it. Okay. He was a state senator. He bought it. And he built it. And um, I, I guess... Uh, not to get ahead of my story, yeah. but um, when they first built it, there was only two ferries. Well, in 1937 or 38, they put the nice on, and the people who would stop and have dinner and didn't go aboard the ferry because okay. they had to wait two hours. Right. So this is a place where they'd go, they, they beautiful, going. beautiful view, have yeah. a nice meal, and then you hop on the ferry and go wherever we're headed. Well, they stopped going. So uh, eventually, can't remember it was 40 or when it was. No, no, it could have been for that because I, I, I was at the dedication and Jimmy Ewan, I don't even know Jim or not. Sure, sure. Jim, Jim was wounded. Uh, yeah. yeah, and he just passed away not long ago. He and uh, he and his wife came and, and uh, they said, uh, we're sorry we missed the dedication, but we had to be here. And Jimmy Ewan was tell you a little story. And he said, I graduated Steamwell High School in 1939. And it was depression. We didn't have anything. Things, yeah. and Things were tough. Things we were came tough. here, and we had a jukebox, and we had nickel cooks, and we had 20-cent hamburgers. That's all you needed. Life was good. And we, we, we were, that was our party. <laughs> Today, you don't have the tuxedos and all this stuff that you know. Yeah. And he said, I had to come and tell you. So I said, can I come down and pump you on World War II? Yeah. And he said, I don't like to talk about it. And his wife said, he won't tell you. Yeah. But I'll tell you something. Before he died. He's a big hero. He said, come on down, I want to talk to you. And, and this is what I found out. Melvin Clark, Colton Foster, Jimmy Ewing. These are all local guys. Billy Hawks. Yeah. Before they died, they wanted to tell you what it was like. Sure. And it, it, it was, I Terrible. was, I was so blessed though that yeah. they gave me, the, I got a, I got about five pages here of Colton Foster. Oh, in the book? In yeah. The book, yeah. Okay. Uh, I talked to Mike and he said, I know how much dad, you and dad loved each other. And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you have this. I wouldn't trust it to anybody. But they went back on the uh, 50th anniversary. He was on Okinawa. And one night, we said in the American Legion, <laughs> we kind of drank quite a few. Okay. Yeah, you and you he's, know, oh, and he, reading the thoughts of he told me stories of what it was. It, it was, was fighting hell for every, earth every foot what of it earth. Was. And, oh, he said, you. So uh, I said, Mike, let me have the story. So Mike took him back for his 50th anniversary. To Okinawa, huh? And he said, um, my dad has always been good to me. He loved me, treated me good, helped me through college and everything. And he said, there's one thing you'll never do. You'll never buy a Jap car. <laughs> and I said, well, Melvin Clark told me that before he died. They still had a great They still what happened. And he said, when we went back to the 50th, there were a line of Japanese waiting to get on the plane. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, you can take that plane. He said, I'm not getting on any plane with a nip. So they're still said, bitter from the Mike experience said, of the war. Dad, you shouldn't say that. About that time, said 300 veteran Marine veterans said, that's what they are. Yeah. It never dies. They were still, just, the wounds oh, were yeah. still there. Yeah. And Jimmy, you had told me about fighting the Germans. How? Same thing. Same thing. Things are, it's things there. The, the sad yeah. side. Yeah. And we weren't there. We, we, how can we decide? Yeah. Just like I've had most of the veterans told me the best thing that Truman ever did was drop that bomb. They just wanted the war to end. They, they said... Melvin Clark told me, he said, as we were going, coming into, he was the first barge into Japan after okay. they the stopped fighting. Right. And he said, Nikki, the women had spears pointed, mm. the children had it. We would have lost yeah, a million yeah, men trying yeah, to take that place. Every it's the best the thing he ever did. So who, who am I to say? I, yeah. I wasn't there. It's a there. different generation. That's different right. Time. That's Wait, right. Let me ask you, we're going to yeah. run out of time in a oh, second. I'm sorry. No, that's all right. We're <laughs> going gonna to continue this. The book, is, a, is it officially out now? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Now, if we want to buy it, how do we do it? Uh, as I said, uh, the, the Gifted Crab in Chester has it. Okay. Billy Denny's uh, Ye Old House Antiques in Stevensville has it. Um, La Point Deli has it. 
Uh, they have it in Easton at the news center. Okay. And I, I haven't. Can we get it online through Amazon or anybody? Or? Uh, my daughter's working on it for okay, me. Okay, all right. Because okay. I'm an old dumb. That's all right. Eastern, you well, anyone I'm under a forty that can handle. I'm, I'm not swift to great to get into this news. Yeah, that's okay. I got a three-year-old great granddaughter. She knows how to do she all said, this stuff. Take a picture. I said, I can't take a picture by camera. Let me show you. <laughs> Three years old, he takes a picture. It. Well, look, at it's called The Changing Island, Ken yeah. Island. It's yeah. out. It's available. Now, talk about your book signing, and we're going to sign off ourselves here. Okay. Uh, it'll be Saturday, this is Saturday the 20th, okay. and it'll be down, at, as I said, uh, La Point Deli. And uh, it'll be from 11 in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. Okay. Well, Nick, what I'm hoping to do is this. Uh, in the very near future, you're going to take us down on Ken Island. Right? I hope We're so. Visit some I of these so. spots you have in the book. Folks, I make a strong recommendation. Anybody who wants to know about Ken Island, the history of everything from bridges to World War II veterans to the ferries and a million other facts, right? Get this book. It's a great summer read. Well, Nick, as usual, thank oh, you my, for having my, us, my okay? Pleasure. My you pleasure. light up Papa's world every time you're on. <laughs> oh, okay. it's wonderful. And you want to give thank a, you. Why don't we end out? You want to give a shout-out to your daughter in San Diego? Hi, darling. It's good to see you. By the way, she's gonna, she'll text me as soon as we get all this. She sees this show and tell us what we did right okay. wrong. Okay. <laughs> all right. Nick, thank you. Thank million. you. I'm Fred McNeil. You're watching QAC TV 7, Papa's World. We had Nick Hoxter and his new book. He's the author of This Changing Island, Ken Island. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.